come to the session. I'm also the moderator of the session, so <laughs> uh, and uh, there was a talk before me, but it's, I think he or she decided not to come. So uh, let me start the timer first, then so that I will not. Uh, can someone uh, take a timer and time me, warn me before five minutes? So I have to, I shouldn't talk more than twenty five minutes. <laughs> Still. Okay. So, uh, hello, welcome. Please sit down. So, uh, when when I first put the title, uh, put the ah great thanks. Uh, make make, make the, the proposal for the talk. I had something in mind. So so talk about privacy, security in general. But when I started to prepare the presentation, I, I realized that I have I I want to talk about some uh, the the things that I want to talk about is over three hours. So I, I tried to cut it down as much as possible, but uh, it may seem a little bit eclectic now. But please please go with it. So uh, my name is Emin. Uh, uh, I work at Syncdal here. I'm a big enthusiast uh, enthusiast in open culture and open source software, and I kind of try to protect my privacy and I want to talk about the, the privacy today. So the name of the talk is Taking the Internet Back. So you, you say, yeah, well, what, 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 what's going on? Why, why do we take the internet back? So internet is getting broken, so to, to, to put it mildly, okay? So you may say, what, 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 what's going on? So it is getting more and more centralized. That, that, that's one of the largest problems currently. So if you, if you remember the, the first uh, internet, the uh, uh, other network, no, it was Ar Arnet something, DARPANET, sorry. Yeah, do, 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 you, do you know that, that triangle thing? So the, the idea of internet is to keep everything connected, right? The, the, the many, many connections. But now we look at it, there are three, four, maybe at most 10 very large players, very large websites, and then most of the traffic is, is going over them. So Facebook is, of course, one of the largest ones. Amazon, not the Amazon website itself, but S3 is Amazon S3. Their web services, AWS, is, is having most of the traffic now. And, and when something goes wrong with the Amazon S3, ma many sites get, bro get, get broken. It, it happened recently. Cloudflare, I don't know whether you heard about it. They are the content distribution network, I think one of the largest. So basically, most of the images you see on the internet come from them. And recently, they had a security issue. Uh, there was a HTTPS problem. Uh, so many of the login information may be leaked because everything goes from them. Google and, and DNS. Uh, who uses Google DNS on their phone, uh, on their computers? Google, yeah. So, so DNS and then Google are also uh, very centralized. So, and, and this is becoming a problem. So, and when they get centralized, it's also is getting easier to surveil people, people record everything, and, and uh, to to uh, use them against them or not against them. I don't know. Okay. So uh, there are some other problems, but I think this is the things that I want to talk about today. So what are, what are we going to do? I mean, these, these are the problems. When we see the problem, we, there should be a solution. We can, as, as users, nudge the internet to the right direction. It's, 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 it's a huge machine, and it's the, the laws of the nature, in a way, laws of the, of the free market. We cannot really prevent it, probably, but we can just, just push, it, push it to the uh, right way. How? Know the value of your personal data. So everything you do, you, your personal data has a value and in the internet, and there are many companies trying to capitalize on that. So know the threats. And threat is here is a technical term of, of security. It, it means the, the people that you want to protect yourself from, basically. Um, so know what you can do about it, how to protect yourself, and act on it, basically. So I'm, I'm going to talk about this. So my data, what, what's, what's uh, personal data? What's your data? Identity, name, photo, ID number, anything that, that uniquely describes you is your identity, right? is your data. Contact information, phone number, addresses, Twitter accounts, uh, Facebook um, uh, handles, emails, everything that uh, people can reach you. Your connections, family, friends, your followers, your followees, people that you follow, or people you interact with, is also your personal data. Uh, 
any file on your device, probably your, your uh, personal information, or if, if, although you don't have the copyrights to them, probably the, the knowledge that you have them on your computer is your personal information. Uh, location, your work, your work location, home location, the restaurants you like to go, uh, sh shops that you go shopping to, what you listen, read, watch, eat, where you spend money, these are all your personal information. And I, I gathered this list by looking at the companies that, that try to capitalize on this kind of data. So for any of the data, I can find a company that try to collect and sell it. So these are all valuable, uh, real market value information, and it's, it's created by you. So now you have to decide something. So what, what, what do you want to protect? Okay, so I, I don't want to protect my face, for example. People can take photos of me. I, I, I don't care, but I don't want people to have my phone number or, or, or the contents of my computer. Or, or I, I, I put my Twitter account publicly. So it's, it's, you have to decide what you want to protect. Okay, and you have to decide what, from whom you want to protect. Yes. So it can be your family. Some, you may want to keep some secret from your parents or, or from your wife if you want to uh, preparing, if you want to prepare a surprise for her, you don't want him, her to know. You may want to keep something out of your friends, um, uh, from your friends. Your employer, co-workers, I think this is more, more public, it's more re relatable. It's, uh, big companies, Google, Facebook, or, or insurance companies, uh, it, it may be problematic to know some of your sicknesses, for example, you, you may want to. So government, this is, I'm not talking about Singapore government. I cannot talk about Singapore government, but, but governments in, in general. Uh, I'm from Turkey, and then Turkey government surveillance is a big, big issue because it's, it's very unjust recently. So if you say something about uh, a government or, or to one of the peoples of the government, you can be prosecuted in a, in a very strong way. So you may want to keep something out of your government, not Singapore government. <laughs> uh, now, so this, this sounds scary, but let, let, let's take a break. It's, it's, it's not about paranoia because we, we have to share some information. We are using some services, right? So. Um, and, and we, we exchange our data with, with some service. So, so Facebook, for example, we, we give our data, but they, they provide us a, a platform for, for connecting with it. Mostly family members, in my case, I, I keep track of my cousins and, and my parents. Uh, YouTube is my main source of entertainment, actually. I use, uh, use it a lot. So Google Search, Google Scholar, I don't know, the, I don't think the academic research can go on without Google Scholar, for example, or Google Image Search. So internet newspaper, basically any website that shows ads that is free, capitalize on some kind of information. So basically we are exchanging our personal information for other services, okay? So uh, also there are personal research recommendations, but what matters is this should be our choice. So uh, I, I can exchange some of my information for some of the values for services. That, that's okay for me, but I, I want to be able to choose which one I want to do. And uh, to do that, we have to learn how to do it, basically. And that, that's what I, I want to talk about. So uh, tracking is uh, becoming a big issue on the internet because the, the Facebook like buttons, Google Analytics, basically, and, and Chrome, if you are using Chrome browser, they can track every website you visit, everything you do online. This is kind of scary for me, and I, I try to protect from it. Uh, so there, there are some tools if you are, are conscious about that. So there are some um, plugins, add-ons for the browser. So Privacy Badger is from EFF. Uh, it's, it's a free organization. Ghost, Ghostry is, is from a private company. Uh, I don't use it much, but Privacy Badger is not available for Android, for example, so you, you can look at it. If you, if, and, and feel feel free to interrupt me anytime if you have more information about any of the topics. Uh, don't connect websites to each other, so giving your Gmail into Facebook or Facebook account into some other website makes them able to connect your accounts, which, which can create a huge network of information for you, because companies deal and in the background to, to merge some data. And data merging is a very uh, juicy thing for the companies, have, having data and, and connecting them. Uh, 
Don't log into websites if not if it's not required. I mean, most of the websites are, are trying to get your login information. You have to provide a lot of details, and then they can track you individually in the companies. Delete all data. This is called data retention uh, in, in technical terms. So if you don't need the data, delete two years old backup check, uh, chats from two years old, for example, because you may change your mind. You may forget what, what you put there, or, or that can be something dangerous. or. Basically, if you don't have the data, if there's no recording, no, nobody can track you, right? That, that, that's the idea here. Uh, turn off Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on your phones if it's not needed, if you don't use, if you don't use because there are also many companies capitalized on this kind of tracking. And this, I, I recently learned this, that the Wi-Fi, when, when there's a search for SSIDs on, on the phone, uh, your, your phone also express its uh, MAC address. So uniquely identifiable MAC address. So if I have the access to access points in this building, I can uniquely track where you are in this building. That is very scary <laughs> for me. And it's, it's, it's very weird why do they do that. Uh, recently, both iPhone and Android 7, I think, is, is trying to solve this by spoofing the MAC address. So it, it uh, publishes a Mac, different MAC address every time it, it makes a scan, unless you are actively using your Wi-Fi. But it's always a good idea to keep them both closed if you are not used if you are not using it. If you make yourself harder to track for people, if you want a little bit out of the grid, so you can pay for the services. So host your own services: email, uh, photo blog, photo information, uh, file server, whatever you need, or, or social media for your friends. You can prefer cash. This is not internet re internet related, but it will be, and it's it's getting more 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 and more internet related, because I know that Visa or Mastercard are are trying to uh, put up some some large data science teams. Okay, and when you use Visa or Mastercard, or every transaction go to Visa or Mastercard again and get an approval from there. So it's it's it's, it's huge. I mean, they have the whole transaction data of the whole world. That's that for, for me, that, that's crazy. So, but, but cash is still one of the uh, last frontiers of privacy, in a way, that nobody can track what you are doing with your money. Uh, so don't put all of your eggs into one basket. So what, what I mean is don't use all of the apps from one company. So, so Google ecosystem, right? So Google Docs, Gmail, uh, Search, uh, Hangouts. I don't think anybody uses it but <laughs> anymore, but still. Uh, on the other side, there's Facebook, right? Most of the people I know use uh, WhatsApp, Facebook, and Instagram on their phones, which are fully owned by the same company. And, and they, 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 when, they may, when they merge it, they know many things about you. So you can just distribute your uh, online preferences and try to keep them separate. Uh, if you encrypt your data, if you make them not visible, what, what you put in there, then you can convert them just, just to carriers. And then you can, they cannot really see what's, what's going on. So, and then the key here is encryption. So if you use encrypted emails, for example, or, or encrypted uh, chats, then they will not be able to see what, what, what's going on. So that, that, that brought us to the idea of encrypted communication. So uh, strong encry encryption or strongly encrypted uh, data means that they cannot be seen otherwise uh, uh, anyone other than the, the key holders, the, the intended uh, user. Okay, so it cannot be eavesdropped. So uh, fortunately, the client-server um, encryption is becoming default. I'm talking about HTTPS or SSL or TL transport layer security TLS to be. Uh, it's, it's becoming default. Many of the applications you use uh, are, are encrypting their data to the server. So when you use a chat, a chat application or, or a web page, the, the, the communication between you and the server cannot be seen by the operator. This is a very good thing. This was not always the case, and people had to fight for this right. So no, nowadays it's, um, it, it's kind of default, but uh, American government um, made a case against using strong encryption, not breakable encryption. So uh, this this. It's interesting. This security or privacy was a it is a right that gained by by legal battles. Uh, but this is only between your know, the, the client and the server, and then server to the client. But servers, most of the servers, most of the services can see the data inside their server. And to to prevent from that, you can 
uh, encrypt end to end. So these are some of the messengers, in instant messaging um, applications that doesn't, don't do end to end encryption. So your data from your client to server is encrypted, from server to the uh, receiver is encrypted, but they can see the data for these ones. So Facebook Messenger, Google Hangouts, Skype, Plain Email. Uh, okay, one more slide. So, and these are the end-to-end -end encrypted communication software, some of the popular ones. What's WhatsApp, of course. iMessage from iPhone. Signal, who, who knows Signal already? Does everyone know? Okay, so Signal was the first one to uh, implement that end-to-end -end, end -end encryption and then they implemented it on, on WhatsApp again. So that, that's, that's a good thing. So PGP based email, Trima is very popular in Germany, but I don't see people using there. Did I miss any of the applications? Oh, WeChat, uh, probably. I, I don't know WeChat. Telegram. <laughs> Sorry? Telegram. 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 Yeah. Ah, yeah. Okay. Telegram is it goes goes to both of one both of them. So if there are secret chats. I use it a lot, but okay. Sorry. <clears throat> Anything else? Do, do you know about WeChat? Is it end to end encrypted? Secret services? So it's also by the Chinese government. So. Ah, okay. So <laughs> <laughs> even though they say it is, okay. So th th that's the thing. If the, the source code is not open, we cannot really trust what they are doing. Because so what WhatsApp is uh, encrypted. So WhatsApp is kind of good, but we don't know sh for sure that they implement it correctly. We only we believe them. We cannot check the code. And I know that they some they do some weird things. So some of the links are just, just uh, don't don't access the receiver. So when I send the Telegram link, for example, it's just blocked out. You cannot receive the Telegram link. It's it's very weird. And it also happened during uh, <coughs> uh, last year. Uh, there was a kind of a media b battle between Facebook and Indian. Uh, how can I say internet fighters? <laughs> I should say. Drones. Ah, yeah. drones. yes, yes. So, so some of the links are blocked by Facebook Messenger and WhatsApp, as far as I heard. Yeah. So that if it's end -to -end encrypted, how that happens, I, I am that that's why. But even though they say that it's it's encrypted, uh, it's not good because there's metadata, and metadata is about not what you communicate, but with whom you communicate. Okay, and and how how frequent you communicate. So that there's a very nice slide that I just copy paste. This is from EFF. Uh, so probably you saw this before, but but please, please read it. It's 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 very good. I'll take you twenty. We give you twenty seconds. So the, the American government is, is collecting data, especially NSA and, and other governments as well, probably. And then they, they uh, argue that met, this is only metadata. But metadata is very re relevant. And I, I know that it's, it's, it can be used to, to even uniquely identify people. So uh, one, one example is, is it's very strange. So face, face, uh, on Facebook, I don't use Facebook that much, which you may understand. But I, I still keep it for, for the connection to my family. So I, I saw a friend uh, recommendation. Okay, the, the name was was familiar, but the, not, not the photo. And the name was the the real estate agency that we are we were dealing back then. And I don't have his number on my phone. My wife don't have him his him don't has him on the Facebook as a friend, but she was WhatsApping with him. And probably it's just a name so facebook was finding the name and find the user with the same name and, and offering it uh, offering it that user to me as, as a recommendation so that that's that, that's very weird so now i can track people right if there's a new recommendation and and i can for example find the city let's say someone in in, in hong kong and if i know i have a friend in hong kong i can understand that yeah this my friend in hong kong is, is communicating with this person that's that, 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 that's a privacy issue in, in my case. That, that's why it, it's good to keep uh, networks separate, basically. So metadata is important. So there are some alternatives to, to keep track of, uh, to use. So I, I list some of them here. Uh, and my criteria are respect privacy, and they are auditable, basically. Whether, even though they say that they don't track us or, or they 
respect our privacy, we should be able to audit. So for messaging, Signal is a is a good one. It's it's they are still it's under still active active development and it looks good. Just just uh, install it and and check it basically. Ring is an interesting one. It uh, there was a there was a presentation last year here in this room as well. That's a fully distributed network, end-to-end -end -end encrypted. Uh, uh, and they also have uh, video chat with, with fully encrypted. XMPP with Tor, I don't, who, who knows XMPP protocol? Okay, so XMPP was used to be Jabber, and it was the default messaging protocol by, by Google Talk and, and Facebook Messenger, but Google tried with Hangouts, they, they break the XMPP protocol uh, compliance and they just got that. They, they are still dying Hangouts. And Facebook Messenger just got stronger with, with WhatsApp. But you can still host your own server with, with Jitsi, especially, and meet.jitsi. You should, you should check it. It's a very good uh, website for, for making conference calls. Uh, CryptoCat uh, this is a nice application. Uh, it's on, on the web. You can chat privately, uh, secure connection. Telegram, we already mentioned it. Telegram is under a bit uh, arguable because of they have their own encryption system, which they say it's not breakable, but encryption is a kind of a risky thing, so people, some people don't, don't trust them. And good old IRC. It's not encrypted, but you can host your own server, and nobody needs to know that you are chatting on an IRC. And, and you, you should always use it with, with SSL, uh, transport layer security. Okay, I have four minutes, thank you. So for search, DuckDuckGo, I made it defo default. Uh, it took a few days to, to get used to it, but I 90% I, of the time I, I find what I'm looking for. And when I, when I look, look at my search history on, on Google, it's, it's, it's too much to, to, to give to Google. And now I only, use Google, I only use Google for if I cannot find something on DuckDuckGo, and it's, it's working for me. Question on sure. The, the, the so I'm using the Google as well. Okay. Very often I don't find what I want, so I do the ah. type G so okay. that redirect to, uh, ah, to yeah. Google. The question is, how much Google knows about me when I do that? Uh, pipe G or, or, or um, exclamation mark G? Bank. bank G. So when you do bank G, it, it redirect, to redirect to Google, so you are using Google, basically. It's just a convenience. It's HTTPS to Google? Yes, yeah, so if you are log logged into Google, they can still... It's, you are basically using Google. So, uh, yeah. But their image search is coming from Bing, as far as I know, that is internal, so they, they put a, a proxy for you there. And also there are some applications or websites that put a proxy between you and Google if you, want, if you don't want to use Google. They, they make the search and then come back to you. So you can set up your private cloud. There was a workshop about NextCloud yesterday. Sorry. Uh, the okay. Uh, I don't have much time, but okay. <laughs> if I have time at the end, I have no, no, two, two, two more minutes. Okay, I will just go through them. And their website is there. Sandstorm was a very nice application. They had a private cloud Docker kind of thing using JavaScript which is very interesting and it was very easy to install, but they recently announced that they are closing the, the, the business company part, so it is possible that they will die soon. Although, ch check it, it's, it's very easy to install on your server and uh, it's, it's, it's a very nice thing. So for file share, again, Nextcloud, uh, sync thing, uh, I, I use it to, to sync between my phone and, and computer. It's, it's an alternative for uh, bits, torrent, no, uh, what was it? Bit syncing, I think. So the, the syncing system from BitTorrent, which is a pro proprietary system. Uh, syncing is good. Git NX uses Git. It's, it's very geeky, but it's, it's, it's nice to use. Uh, Mega NS was, um, uh, Mega Com, it was Mega Com uh, NZ. It was, it's a pro, uh, it was the product of the Kim.com, the, the, the uh, Mega Upload founder. He, he, uh, founded the co this company in New Zealand and it uses end-to-end -end encryption so they store the files in the cloud encrypted and they give 50 gigs of uh, storage space which is very nice but if two years ago I think he announced that the, the company is sold to the New Zealand government and he himself doesn't trust it anymore 
I, I still use it because it's it's encrypted and New Zealand. I don't have any problems with New Zealand government, not yet. So, <laughs> and they give 50 gigs of free space. It's it's, it's nice. You, you can you can check it as well. Uh, for social, there is uh, Habzilla. I think this is their third name, as far as I know. It was Friendica, then Red Madrix, now Habzilla. It's an interesting project. It's a PHP project, and they try to combine all of the social features. So it's just like Facebook board. Also, you can host websites. Uh, yeah, OK. Genius Social and Pump.io. Pump.io are, are uh, Twitter clones, basically, but they are federated. So you, it's like email. You can host your own server and then connect uh, in between. RetroShare is also a very nice project. I don't have many friends to use it. But it's, it's a client application that shares message, uh, RSS, and file with end-to-end -end encryption. Uh, you, you can take photos, but I, okay. Just <laughs> and encryption, GNU Privacy Guard, GPG, it's, it's the most famous one. Enigmail is for email. Uh, Keybase IO, they are trying to somehow make the, the using GPG popular again. It's, 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 it's a very nice one. Uh, for email, Enigmail, and Tutanota, uh, maybe you heard about Proton Mail. It was very famous and it was featured on Mr. Robot, but it's a closed system, cl closed system proprietary system. Uh, Tutanota is a German initiative company. Uh, they are um, developing and giving services for end to end encrypted email, so you don't have to use PGP. Although there hasn't been new features for the last one year, so it may, they may go down this soon. Uh, okay, so at the internet, you know Tor, probably. Tor is a very nice. Network for, for, for privacy. It's, it's a free VPN, basically, but which is a very slow one. Uh, Freenet, GNU.net, and I2P, they are uh, private encrypted networks piggybacking on the internet infrastructure. So people cannot see you, people cannot, people cannot track you, but they are very slow. And you may find some very uh, disturbing stuff there because they are not regulated, so uh, go with care. I2P is, is for torrent. Uh, it's, it's a privacy aware, anonymous tor torrent sharing, but they have their own network now. So uh, this is Prism Break. Actually, the, I, I have some stickers and the QR code should go there, uh, but one of them is not working. I'm sorry, with the cloud one. Uh, they, they, they messed up <laughs> the resolution. But you, you can find all of these uh, uh, applications on this pr Prism Break website. Just, just check it out. Uh, yeah, I, I will probably upload the, the slides later. And yeah, stay, stay protected, basically. Yeah, thank you. Any questions? And then you can set up in the.